winter cropping is potentially really good um, for optimizing uh, resource use. Um, so you can get greater yields uh, from the intercrop than if you were growing the sole crops on their own. Um, there's potential for improved uh, soil uh, benefits, particularly if you're using a legume where you've got things like nitrogen fixation and perhaps different rooting patterns can help with soil structure. Um, and you also tend to get um, an improvement in terms of competition, uh, whether it's with diseases, because you get physical breaks um, between susceptible crops, um, and also you can improve uh, weed uh, suppression as well if you're growing it on a, a very low input uh, approach. A more practical way maybe on farm are some um, some more sort of just single point measurements. So you might be interested in, for example, the soil structure, which intercrops can improve. So simply just turning a spade of soil over, looking at how crumbly the soil is, whether there are more worms, that type of thing could give you information on the soil impacts. Looking at yields, disease levels, things like that in the above ground parts of your crop. Behind me is one of our first trial, which we're doing with the Hutton Institute. And we're growing um, mainly oats, but also an intercrop, which is oat and pea mix. The, uh, the reason we're doing it is that we've been growing vegetables on the island, and Lismore is known as being quite a fertile place. Um, and one of the things we're lacking really is a, a grain crop, uh, which we would want for our own consumption, but also we have uh, 50 to 60 hens, rescue hens, which we spend a lot of money on feed at the moment. So if we can produce our own feed, that would also be useful. The first thing we need to decide is what crops we're going to sow as intercrops. It's common to sow cereals along with a clover, or cereals and peas, a legume, or beans with wheat, or beans with oats even. Once we've decided what crops we're going to sow, then we've decided we need to decide if we're going to sow them simultaneously or independently. Along with a historic knowledge of previous cropping, we would first start with the soil analysis, including pH, and we would amend that by liming or by putting NP and K on, bearing in mind that if we're going to use a legume in our intercropping, that we would potentially use much less nitrogen than we would as a standard monoculture. What we use is this Amazon power harrow drill combination where we can actually put fer place fertiliser along with the seed and the seed's placed in the ground using these disc coulters. But that's just one example. We can sow one of the monocultures and then broadcast the other uh, intercrop afterwards. With intercropping, it's been reported that there's a reduced pressure on pest, disease and weed problems in the crop compared with a monoculture. However, I expect plant protection products to be required to grow a companion crop. Possibly at a reduced rate, or certainly at a reduced frequency. However, it's really important that you pay attention to what um, plant protection products you're going to use. Not all products will be compatible with both crops. Harvest operations could happen in a very similar way, particularly with whole crop. It would be cut, baled and wrapped or ensiled in a pit in exactly the same way as it was a monocle. Where it's different, is in a combinable crop operation where timing is really crucial and there's likely to be a compromise made because the weather or the growing season will have affected each of the crops in a different way. But the combine will harvest the crop in the usual way but later after the harvest operation the seed will need to be separated in a grain dresser or a separating process afterwards. There's lots of information about innovations and practical guidance coming out of intercropping research projects such as Diversify and Remix. And you can visit those project websites to get inspiration about intercropping and your own intercropping ideas.